Okay, so before starting, we should know what is balanced diet. So balanced diet is a diet which provides us with all the nutrients that we need, like carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, fiber, water. It should provide us each of them in adequate amount. Then it contributes to what is called as a balanced diet. Now, out of these nutrients, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, we usually call three of them as macronutrients. Why macro? Because they are needed in large quantities. Other nutrients like vitamins, minerals, we call them micronutrients. Micro, again, why? Because they are needed in small quantities. Now, although they are micronutrients, they are required in very small quantity, but they are very, very essential for our body. Because they help us to fight diseases, they build our immunity, they participate in metabolic reactions. So they are an essential part of our, uh, they are required for an essential part of our body system. Next slide. Now, if we talk about vitamins, we can broadly classify them into fat-soluble vitamins and water-soluble vitamins. Under the fat-soluble vitamins, we have various categories like A, D, E, and K. And under water-soluble vitamins, we usually classify them as vitamin C and the group B vitamins. Next slide. Now, coming to group B vitamins, what are group B vitamins? They are basically a collection of eight water-soluble vitamins, which are essential for the various metabolic reactions of our body. Now, why they are important is because most of these vitamins, they cannot be stored by the body. Being water-soluble, we have to consume them regularly in the diet. And if we do not consume them, then what will happen? It will ultimately lead to various deficiency diseases. Hence, that is the importance of discussing group B vitamins. Next slide. So we are talking about eight water-soluble vitamins. They are basically uh, included as B1, thiamine, B2, riboflavin, B3, niacin, B5, pentothenic acid, B6, pyridoxin, B7, biotin, B folic acid, and B12, cobalamin, or also called as cyanocobalamin. Next slide. Now, what do these vitamins do? What is the role of these vitamins in our body? If we consider each one by one, then you can see B1, that is thiamine, it is mainly playing a role in carbohydrate metabolism and improving the nervous system health of our body. Similarly, B2 is needed for the digestion and metabolism of various substances like proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. It is needed for the formation of the red blood cells, and also it helps in growth and reproduction. Niacin lowers the serum cholesterol and it also maintains the nervous system. Then pentothenic acid is commonly called as anti-stress vitamin and it also helps to convert fat, carbohydrates and proteins into energy. B6, that is pyridoxin, it aids in the formation of antibodies and in the fat and carbohydrate metabolism. It is also involved in the synthesis of various amino acids. Similarly, B7 is important for the metabolism of lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates. Then folic acid is essential for the growth and reproduction of all the body cells and formation of red blood cells. And B12, it helps in the formation and regeneration of red blood cells, thereby preventing anemia, and is also an important part for metabolic reactions of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Next slide. Now, this uh, functions of B vitamin, we can also broadly classify them in another way. Like we can classify them as blood forming factors, metabolic factors, or factors involving for nervous system. You see that most of these vitamins, they have a role in metabolism. Thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, or almost all of them are there for the metabolic reactions. Some of them, like folic acid, pyridoxin, cobalamin, they are important blood forming factors, while others, like thiamine, niacin, pyridoxin, they have an important role in the nervous system function. Next slide. Many studies are carried out which show that B vitamins, they are also closely associated with the cognitive function. 
And it is seen that if there is deficiency of B vitamin, it could influence the memory function and even contribute to age-associated cognitive impairment and leading to dementia. Studies, they show that there is a close relationship between the serum levels of folate, B6 and B12 especially related with dementia, kinds of Alzheimer's dementia. So hence the growing importance of B2, B, group B vitamins. Next slide. Now these group B vitamins, we also sometimes call them as booster vitamins. Why booster? Because they help boost our immunity and help us to prevent various infections. Then they also prevent various neurogenerative and metabolic disorders. And they also have a boost for energy and metabolism. So we sometimes even name them as booster vitamins. Next slide. Okay, once we know the functions, we have to obtain them. From where do we get them? We get from all of these dietary sources. Now that includes, good thing is, it includes both plant as well as animal products. So if we consume these products like green leafy vegetables, whole grains, cereals, nuts and oil seeds, meat, egg, fish, milk and milk products and various fruits, all this will collectively fulfill our requirement for the various vitamins. Hence, that is the importance of consuming a balanced diet. Next slide. Now, looking at the recommended dietary allowance for the vitamins, how much daily we require these vitamins. So, you will see that the, the require, requirement is very small. The amount that is required is very less. But it will vary depending upon the activity. A sedentary worker will require less quantity of vitamins as compared to a moderate or a heavy activity worker. Similarly, if you go down, you see that the requirement is more in pregnancy as well as in lactating female. So the requirement change with the change in the activity as well as the state of the body. Next slide. Now, once we have taken the vitamins, the other thing is absorption. So what are the various factors which affect the absorption of vitamins? Next slide. First is age. So there are certain physiological changes which are occurring with age. The process of aging itself can negatively affect the absorption, transport and metabolism of group B vitamins that will thereby causing the increasing requirement, especially in the older population. What happens is there can be some kind of malabsorption that will prevent the absorption or there is reduction in the gastric acid secretion that will again prevent the release as well as the absorption of the vitamins or there can be interaction with certain drugs that will impair the absorption of the vitamins and hence leading to the deficiencies. Next slide. 